A ghostly shadow glides beneath the waves. No sound, no radar signal, no trace. But inside, five men sit in silence, carrying a deadly cargo worth hundreds of millions. This is no military operation. This is a narco submarine. For years, these underwater ghosts have haunted the vast oceans, smuggling drugs across continents. Authorities have seized over 200 of them. But how many more have vanished into the deep, completing their deadly mission? Today, we uncover the brilliant and terrifying design of these vessels. How do they work? Who builds them? And why has no one ever caught the most advanced ones at sea? The story of narco submarines is more than just a crime saga. It's a battle of engineering, a war of innovation, a relentless chess match between the cartels and the world's top law enforcement agencies. And in this war, the cartels are winning. In the beginning, the drug trade had simpler methods. Smugglers hid kilos of cocaine in cars, on boats, even in the stomachs of desperate mules. But law enforcement adapted, and so did the cartels. Then came the 1990s, and with them, a new breed of smuggler, one who saw the ocean as more than a barrier. They saw it as an opportunity. The first narco submarines were crude, barely seaworthy vessels, designed for short trips, just enough to sneak past border patrols. But with each bust, the designs evolved. The boats became faster, quieter, more invisible. And somewhere in the dense jungles of Colombia, hidden along a river far beyond the reach of any law, a new industry was born an industry dedicated to one purpose, engineering the perfect smuggling machine. Meet Oscar Moreno Ricardo, the so-called king of semi-submersibles. He isn't just a drug lord, he's an architect, a designer of vessels that can cross entire oceans without detection. Ricardo's shipyard is no ordinary dock. It's hidden deep in the jungle, protected by miles of dense foliage. Here, teams of expert craftsmen, known as master builders, construct submarines from scratch. No high-tech facilities, no modern supply chains, just raw ingenuity. And their creations, they don't just float, they disappear. These master builders leave signatures in their designs, unique problem-solving techniques, a twist of fiberglass here, a hidden vent there. Each sub bears the mark of its creator. And just like any great artist, the best ones become legends. Model 1. The Low Profile Vessel, LPV. The first true narco submarine to change the game was the Low Profile Vessel, LPV. It's not a full submarine, just 14 meters long, built to stay right above the waterline. From a distance, it looks like nothing more than a small wave. Radar can't detect it. Helicopters fly over it without noticing. And inside, 7.7 .7 tons of cocaine, packed like gold bars. Life inside is hellish. Five men, crammed into a tiny space, breathing stale air, running on sheer desperation. The engine hums behind them, vibrating through the thin fiberglass walls. There's no comfort, just bunks stacked tight. A single hatch for entry, and enough fuel to get them to their destination. If they make it, the cartel makes millions. If they don't, well, there's always another crew. But not every LPV reaches its target. A US Marine Patrol aircraft spots one moving too fast, too suspiciously. Within minutes, a Coast Guard team is in pursuit. A helicopter, two speedboats. The chase begins. Inside the sub, the crew panics. They have one last option, the scuttling valve, a self-destruct mechanism that floods the vessel in seconds, taking all the evidence with it. But they hesitate, just for a moment. And that moment is enough. Boots hit fiberglass. A loud bang as the hatch is forced open. The mission has failed. The drugs are seized. The crew is arrested. But here's the truth. For every sub caught, dozens more make it through. And as law enforcement struggles to keep up, the cartels are already testing their next creation, a vessel capable of crossing entire oceans undetected. Model 2. The Transatlantic Semi-Submersible some submarines don't just skim the coastline, they cross entire oceans. One such vessel, a 20-meter-long semi-submersible, sets out from Brazil, bound for Europe. Inside, three men endure a brutal 6,112-kilometer journey. There's no GPS, just a compass and sheer willpower. Food is scarce. The air is thick. The mission, deliver millions in cocaine without being seen. But the ocean is unforgiving. Storms rage. Waves crash. Fuel runs low. After 27 grueling days, they're stranded. 
Desperate, their captain calls an old contact in Spain, hoping for rescue. But law enforcement is already watching. They track the sub's final approach, waiting for the perfect moment. As the crew sinks the vessel, hoping to erase the evidence, officers move in. Two smugglers are caught immediately. The captain hides for five days before he's finally arrested. The cocaine? $100 million gone. But this is just a setback, not a defeat. The cartels always adapt. Model 3. The Snorkel Submarine If semi-submersibles weren't stealthy enough, the next step in the evolution was clear a vessel that could dive deeper, evade radar, and stay hidden longer. Enter the Snorkel Submarine, a 24-meter long vessel, almost completely submersible, with only a thin air tube poking above the surface. That snorkel provides just enough air to cool its diesel engine and keep the crew alive. Unlike older models, this one mimics military submarines. It's built from fiberglass, making it invisible to sonar and difficult to detect by aircraft. The cargo hold can carry eight tons of cocaine and enormous payload for an undetectable vessel. Inside conditions are still brutal, but slightly more bearable. There's a basic toilet, a sink, and some small comforts to make long journeys possible. But here's the real kicker, not a single one has ever been caught at sea. Every snorkel sub authorities have found was on land, abandoned, or discovered during construction. Which means the ones in operation, they work. And if they work, the real question is how many have already slipped through? Model 4. The fully submersible electric narco sub. Then law enforcement stumbles upon something terrifying. In the heart of the Colombian jungle, hidden in an illegal shipyard, a fully electric, completely submersible narco submarine. No diesel engine, no exhaust, no need for a snorkel. This vessel can vanish completely beneath the water, invisible to sonar, radar, and aerial surveillance. At 12 meters long, it's smaller than earlier models. But that's by design. This sub isn't meant to travel alone. Instead, it attaches to larger ships, riding beneath them like a parasite hidden from security patrols. Once the coast is clear, it detaches, diving deep, completing the final stretch of its journey undetected. What makes it work? 10 tons of batteries, giving it 12 hours of fully submerged travel. It moves slowly just five kilometers per hour, but it doesn't need to be fast. It just needs to be invisible, and it is. Authorities have never caught one in action. The only reason we know they exist. One was abandoned before its maiden voyage, but if one was built, how many more are already out there? Narco submarines are getting smaller, more efficient, harder to detect. For every capture, a new design is already in production. The cartels don't stop. They adapt. In 2022, authorities finally caught Oscar Moreno Ricardo. A victory? Maybe. But somewhere in the jungle, another mastermind is already at work. A new engineer. A new design. A new generation of narco submarines? More advanced, more invisible, more unstoppable. Because in this war, the ocean always hides its secrets. If you found this story as fascinating as we did, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Share this with someone who needs to know the reality of what's happening beneath the waves. There's always more to uncover, and we're just getting started.